Hello, I'm Joanna Grace. I run a thing called The Sensory Projects and I'm a part of the team working on this um, project to create sensory accessibility to kayaking. In this little film, I'm going to tell you um, what we're hoping to do and what we're hoping you will do. And I just want to say a big thank you for being a part of the project with us. So what we're hoping to do is twofold. The project is aiming to create accessibility to natural experiences. So in this experience, it's kayaking, which is very outdoorsy and in nature. And in terms of creating accessibility, we're thinking about sensory access. Now, we are looking at two broad groups, but this applies to lots and lots of different people. So one group is people who might not ever be able to go kayaking for whatever reason. And for that group, we want to create access by bringing kayaking to you. If you can't go kayaking, then we want to bring those natural experiences to you so that you can have that type of experience if you can't actually have the real deal. And for the other group, it's people for whom going kayaking might be tricky because of the sensory experiences involved. So those, the newness of those experiences or the type of those experiences might create a barrier to access. And we are hoping to break down some of those barriers using our sensory access story, our kayaking story. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, what's in the box tell you ever so quickly about telling a sensory story and then tell you what we hope that you will be able to do. So without further ado, what's in the box? Um, <laughs> I hope you like the boxes. I've been painting the outsides of them to make them look a bit kayaky. Um, what's in the box isn't actually anything particularly spectacular and that's because this sensory story is going to be available for everybody to use once this project is finished so we wanted it to be resourced with things that you might just be able to find around your house obviously if you're getting one of the boxes it is a little bit more special um, but if you aren't getting one of the boxes don't worry because there are ways of um, patching in alternatives to the things I'm going to show you in the box so thinking about the sensory experiences involved in kayaking Number one, you're going to be getting wet, aren't you? And actually, water is a really unique sort of sensory experience. So we've popped in a little bowl for you to put some water in. And because it's quite small, hopefully you can move it around, you can feel it on your feet, you can feel it on your hands, you can splash it. So that's for exploring the water. Um, they are all packed, by the way, in this um, sort of sea-coloured, sparkly stuff to make it a bit fun. And we've hidden some extra treasures in, just like if you were going to the beach, you might find some extra treasures. Um, if you are getting wet, you might be paddling, you might have your feet in the water as you're launching your kayak, but as you paddle along, perhaps sea spray hits you in the face, or perhaps spray from the paddles flings back and hits you, or perhaps you're kayaking on a really sort of misty, steaming lake. So we've also got a little spritz bottle so that you can have that feeling of water spraying on your skin. Um, we have sand which I'm not going to take out of the box because I'll make a terrible mess but obviously if you were walking across the beach to get down to the sea to go kayaking then you're going to feel sand on your feet and if you are walking across some sort of mud or something like that at the edge of a lake you're going to have that sort of sensation on your feet so you can take the sand out you could pop the sand into this bowl you could get another little tray and lay the sand out and have an explore this is a really interesting sensory experience when we think about the group for whom sensory experiences create barriers to access so I know a lot of people for whom that's true and actually quite a few of those people would struggle with things like wearing socks and shoes because your feet have so many nerve endings so it's a lot to ask a feet to process the feeling of that fabric especially the seam along the toes of your socks it's just in the wrong place isn't it and then to have that all squashed into a shoe so that's a big ask and similarly walking on wet sand is a big ask it's a lot of sensation and if I can practice it first at home in a place where I feel safe and secure and I can feel what it's going to feel like then that helps me to get ready for the actual moment and it's not so much about 
changing the sensation or doing anything to remove it. It's just that knowing can help reduce anxiety. It's a bit like if you were going to a party, you'd want to know what the dress code was. And if you knew that you were dressed appropriately, you would feel less anxious about going. Knowing what to expect can take anxiety away. And so having the opportunity to just feel and play with and explore wet sand on your skin can be a really great way of creating access to that experience or removing the barrier. So we've got sand and water. Those are the sorts of things you'd expect. What else do we have? Oh, we have some very sort of uniquely kayaking things. So we have the sound of your zip being done up as your life jacket goes on. That's a really kind of key point, we're ready to go, zip you up, off we go. And then these ones are especially, now these ones, if you haven't got the kit, there are ways that you can create similar experiences and they're described in the booklet. But if you have got the kit, then congratulations because you have neoprene, we've got a wetsuit limb for you to put on. This is a very particular type of sensory experience. I spent a lot of my childhood and adolescence peeling on and off wetsuits and wetsuits from a long time ago that are much less stretchy than this and the feeling of neoprene squishing you, the dampness, you know, if you want to go full accurate, you want to get this a bit wet because wetsuits are always damp when you put them on. This is a very unique sensation and you can have that feeling of pulling it off as well. Um, so wetsuit. It also has a particular smell to it, neoprene, and you'll be able to smell that too. And actually smell can be a really big barrier for people who struggle with sensation because it directly affects your limbic brain. So having the chance to familiarize yourself with these smells before they all come at you all at once with all these other sensations before you go kayaking is again a great way to create access. And then my last, um, <laughs> I'm really pleased with these. I know they don't look exciting, but these are actual kayak toggles. Because if you go kayaking, one of the things you have to do, and it's not so obvious, because obviously you think about the water and the sand, because those are the those are the things you take photos of. But this is the reality of kayaking, is you have to drag your kayak across the beach or across the car park, and they're heavy. And you, this is a kayak toggle. This is what you would drag it with. So you can thread it through somebody's fingers and create that sensation of, pull and have that feeling and again for the group for whom sensations are going to create barriers to access this sort of knowing what to expect knowing that this is going to be a part of the experience that it's the whole experience isn't just being at sea paddling or being on the lake paddling the experience is putting on the wetsuit feeling the sand on your feet pulling the kayak along these are, this is the sensory landscape of that experience and it's what we want to give you opportunity to share, whether that is by creating access to a real event or by sharing in the real sensations through using the sensory story in this box. And so thank you ever so much for being a part of it. Of the two groups, to tell the story, it's very simple. You just say the sentence and then share the sensory experience that goes with it. So you want to spend a little bit of prep time before you start just getting all your bits and bobs. Like obviously you need some water in that, you need some water in that. It's not anything complicated, it just needs a little bit of setup. You know, think about where you're going to put your sand, get everything ready and then say the sentence and spend the time exploring the sensory experience. If you are sharing the sensory story with somebody for whom the sensory experiences involved in kayaking might pose a barrier to access, then you want to spend time exploring the different sensations. And if you are a language user talking about how they feel, what you could do, you know, it might be that you decide you're going to wear a pair of socks or something like that so you don't have to feel the sand on your skin or that you want to make sure that the wetsuit has warm water on it before you get in such a luxury. You know, you can have those sort of practical conversations. What am I going to do? How am I going to deal with this? What comes next? What's going to be expected of me? So that you are getting the lineage of this story. And we have written this story to be as accurate as possible to the experience that you will have when you go kayaking. But if you are using it in conjunction with a particular place, you might want to check what they're going to do. Talking too fast. If you are sharing the story with somebody with profound and multiple learning disabilities, so this is part of our group for whom kayaking might never be an option, what you're aiming to do is share the story in the same way each time. 
So just say the sentence or the story. Try not to add in any extra sort of explanation and take your time to explore the sensation that goes with it. It's quite likely that the first time you share this story, the person you're sharing it with will just be a bit stunned, like, what are you doing? Why, why am I suddenly feeling water? What's, what's this wetsuit fabric doing? None of this is familiar to me, this is all strange. And you might not see very much response at all. The aim is to keep sharing the story, not all in one go, but like share it again tomorrow and share it again the next day. Say the sentences in the same way, offer the same experiences. And as familiarity grows, I hope that you see a greater engagement with those experiences. So maybe as the familiarity grows, you get somebody who's pulling back against the toggle, pulling their hand, or somebody who's actively exploring the sand, whatever it is. So that's our creating access part. This next bit is kind of me. Um, this is something I really, really hope for from this project, especially with regards to people with profound and multiple learning disabilities, because there is this phenomenon that occurs within the research that's done about these people and the projects that run around these people, which is that they never get asked what they thought. <laughs> Nobody ever asked them, did you enjoy that? Um, you know, how was it for you? Did, were you worried about that? They don't get asked. They, they have no voice in these sorts of things. Somebody gets asked, it's the person standing next to them, their, um, their family member, their carer, you, you know, lovely people, and I'm sure their reporting is accurate, but they don't get asked directly. And I really want to be able to ask them directly. So what we are asking you to do is to fill in a little uh, profile that explains how they communicate because we know that people with profound and multiple learning disabilities are exceptional communicators and they create their own set of meaning, their own language, their own expression and it's different for everybody. So what we're asking you to do is fill in that little profile and get a few people to fill it in so that we can get lots of different perspectives because obviously you will have a really good idea but we don't know, none of us know that our idea is wholly accurate so we want a sort of a cross-reference of how does this person express themselves and then please will you send us a couple of little video clips of you sharing the story. Maybe one of you sharing the story when you first get it and one of you sharing the story when you've been doing it for a little while so that we can watch those and listen directly to the person who experienced the story. And we'll use the information that you gave us on those little survey sheets to do that so that we can hear their voice or their expression. And I'm so keen that we do that because I see bigger studies, you know, we're just a little project, we're, we're not a, a research study, we're just a little project, um, but I see bigger studies where they say, oh, well, we couldn't ask the people, so we did this, and I want to be able to say, yes, you can, you could, you could, if you just, you know, with a bit of oomph, it's possible to listen directly to people with profound multiple learning disabilities. So, Thank you so much for being a part of this. I will pop in the information below a link to a guide to sharing sensory stories if you want a bit more information about that. But it really is very simple. You know, do what's right for you. Get your kit sorted, say the sentence, share the experience. Our sensory story can also be sung. So if you want to sing the sentence, hats off to you and um, you can listen to it as a song as a cue for the activity to let you know that you're going to do this but I wouldn't try myself singing and doing the censoring at the same time um, and I will also pop um, my contact details so that if you want to ask me any questions about what you're doing as you explore this sensory adventure then you can but thank you thank you thank you so much for being a part of it I hope you have fun exploring your box of kayaking sensations when it arrives bye